We all know people who suffer from allergies, get headaches, have a lot of bad days, maybe. But what about people who think the world around them, everything from car exhaust to upholstery, is making them sick? Many of them are turning to a new and controversial field of medicine not recognized by the mainstream medical community. It's called environmental medicine, and thousands are flocking to a pioneer doctor in Dallas who they believe is a true healer. But the Texas Board of Medicine says what he is doing is dangerous, and they want him out of this business. What if you thought the world around you was making you sick? The house that you live in, the car that you drive, the television that you watch, or that cell phone that you spend hours on. Dr. William Ray says he's treated over 30,000 patients from all over the world who believe the world around them has made them sick, very sick. Oh. A lot of times they know what's wrong with them, but they haven't been able to get any help. And I knew I was dying. And they, they're looking for a solution to their uh, problems. I knew I had like a month left. A board-certified surgeon, Dr. Ray has become one of the foremost practitioners of environmental medicine. But the Texas Board of Medicine wants to shut him down. We believe he's posing a threat to the public health of the citizens of Texas. A threat to the public? We went to Dr. Ray's clinic in Dallas to find out. We did have to degrease all the exercise equipment. You degreased the exercise mm -hmm, equipment? Because of the fumes coming off of it. And, it's, and why, why is there aluminum on the... Well, that's to... to a wall out anything on the other side. No cell phones are allowed, and the air is constantly filtered. The walls and floors are made of porcelain and other non-reactive surfaces. And you have porcelain because... Well, there's no fumes and no particulate. Lisa Naj is a patient of Dr. Ray and a medical doctor with a degree from Cornell University. I knew I was sick. I thought I was depressed. I went to a psychiatrist every day for a year. I went to an acupuncturist every day. Yes. Oh. Nothing worked. Lisa became convinced that she was suffering from environmental illness, that chemicals, electromagnetic energy in the world around her were making her ill. I was unable to drive into Los Angeles to see the psychiatrist because of the uh, diesel exhaust coming in the car. And I had no knowledge that I was chemically sensitive. And she says the mold in her former house was toxic. Your house made you sick. Oh, absolutely. And it's possible that I had other exposures before this house and other situations which, which added to my toxic load so that this house tipped me over. Yeah. So Lisa turned to Dr. Ray for treatment. So I ended up realizing that Bill Ray was the one clinician who knew what was going on. The first thing Dr. Ray did was test her for environmental allergies. He injects a small amount of antigen, which is a diluted amount of the very thing Lisa thinks she's allergic to, and that triggers an immune system response. Dr. Ray tests for a whole slew of allergies, like perfumes, fabric softener, diesel fuel, woods like oak, and many others. We all see car exhaust, smell car exhaust on the way to work in the morning, and we all have dogs and cats at home. We all have new carpeting at work. We all have air fresheners at the airport that we get exposed to. It's how you deal with those exposures. Do you get tired or get a headache that makes you more environmentally ill? Then Lisa, like most of Dr. Ray's patients, begins what he calls the detoxification program. He claims it cleanses her body of all pollutants and gives her saunas, purified air, and certain kinds of food in a controlled environment. If it all sounds a little out there to you, you're not alone. We don't know that he hasn't harmed these people. We know that these patients believe that they have been cured, but we don't know that that's true. Marie Robinson is an attorney with the Texas Board of Medicine, which is trying to stop Dr. Ray from practicing his brand of medicine and may even strip him of his license. The treatments that he's giving, we believe, can be dangerous to the public health, such as injecting jet fuel or natural gas. Pseudoscience. That's what it appears. Treatments with no clinical significance. Right. Have you injected patients with jet fuel? Never have, no. I've used antigens of it, and of course, as you well know, that was one of the accusations. One of the accusations right. in the complaint is that you injected and of course, patients uh, with jet fuel. Herpetic. What did you do with jet fuel? We use an antigen, a provocation test, just like we would a food or just like we would a mold. Injecting jet fuel or anything part of jet fuel into someone, I think, would be potentially dangerous. We asked Dr. David Kahn, who, unlike Dr. Ray, is a board-certified allergist and immunologist, if any of this makes sense. 
He says that he makes people feel better. They're feeling better living in a enclosed room with aluminum foil, never leaving without oxygen. Is that a cure? Absolutely not. But do Dr. Ray's methods really work when we come back? Nightline continues from Washington with Terry Moran. Well, let's return now to the story of a doctor who is under fire for practicing environmental medicine, an unrecognized specialty that holds the world around us is making us sick. Uh, Dr. William Ray says his brand of medicine is well respected. And I might say that in Japan now they have four environmental clinics that are at university medical schools that are patterned after our uh, uh, methods in our clinic. And we asked Dr. Ray if his methods had been peer-reviewed here in the U.S. New England Journal of Well, I don't know about New England Journal because that's a drug company about journal, JAMA. isn't it? Oh, it's a drug company journal. Well, it seems to be. It seems to be talking about it all the time. How about Nature? Uh, I don't think there was any put in Nature, no. Journal of American Medical Association. I would say no. So why do you think that, that before the Texas Medical Board, yeah. you are being hauled labeled a pseudo-scientific, yeah. dangerous doctor, yeah. uh, and, and people essentially want you out of practice altogether. Seems like somebody wants to limit the uh, uh, public's uh, chance for uh, uh, choice, freedom of choice in medical care, doesn't it? What's gotten him in trouble, he has yet ref so far refused to submit his treatments to the double-blind sort of gold standard studies or to an institutional review board to oversee it. Dr. Ray denies this, but none of it matters to Lisa Nye. I'm to show you that I've got a headset on every phone in the house because I can't really use this kind of a telephone. If I hold it up in the, in the piece here, it's got a magnet and it gives me a headache. So Following Dr. Ray's program, she injects herself daily with all sorts of allergy shots. And this one is terps, which is terpenes from wood. I was very sensitive to pine. When I tested all the chemicals, I was sensitive to some and not to others. So the ones that I'm sensitive to, they're put in here with water. It's basically water. And so this would be water with a little bit of like a little smidgen. diesel, yeah. perfume, yeah. mercury. Yeah. And that's what's going to surprise people, Lisa, that you are injecting oh God. We inject, mercury. Yeah, but we inject vaccinations with huge amounts of mercury. Comparatively, it's probably one one hundredth or one one thousandth of the amount. In fact, most vaccines today don't contain any mercury. To trained immunologists like Dr. Khan, there's another possible explanation for Dr. Ray's success. His patients are ill, but from stress and other psychological factors. You can have people stressed out and they can break out in a rash or hives or all sorts of things just from the nervous excitement. These things are real events, but it's not because of the substance they ingested. It's because of their conditioned response. And so when they smell whatever the odor is, they have this condition response, they feel, feel ill, their pulse rate goes up, they may have a headache, a variety of things. Getting away from it all was a matter of survival for Lisa. She moved to an island, Martha's Vineyard, and created a special pollutant-free home, Dr. Ray style. This is technically was supposed to be an oasis bedroom. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to have only cotton, um, and you can see that this is the oxygen concentrator, and this is how I got well. You wear this like this, and you're breathing in and out, and the uh, oxygen is for two hours a day. Dr. Ray says he's treated 30,000 patients uh, over the years. And I guess the question arises, if, if, if you all were doing your job, why, why are they all flocking to him? Most of these patients who have these ailments actually have an underlying psychiatric problem. And one of the problems in this country is the underdiagnosis and undertreatment of psychiatric diseases. And I think we're all guilty of that. To Lisa, that's just plain backwards. It's quite interesting. I've tried to communicate with a psychiatrist who took care of me to invite him over to Bill Ray's clinic to educate him about how many of the patients appear to be mentally deranged or have mental issues and um, how, in fact, when you treat their chemical sensitivity, that their mental situation gets much better. And um, he's refused to obviously, you know, contact me. Okay, puppies, let's go for a walk. 
It is a fact that Dr. Ray and his methods are controversial, scorned as quackery by many mainstream medical researchers and institutions. But all that simply makes no sense to Lisa Naj and many others. They say the world has made them sick, and Dr. William Ray made them better. The hearing in Dr. Ray's case is scheduled for December 1st.